Okay, we'll get, yes, we'll get started here in just a minute. I'm going to wait just another minute for a few more people to join us. And, um, and then we will talk about critique groups and writing buddies. And I see a couple of people here that I've been in critique groups with, Chuck mm -hmm. and um, Francisco. And Tim, those were two, uh, uh, Francisco and Chuck were in the first group that you put together. Nice, yeah. And, um, and the first group did not, we didn't continue, but Chuck and I became writing partners. So that's another plus of this, the writing critique groups is you might not find a group, but you might find someone to partner with writing that's right. buddy. So that's something else we'll be talking about. And I'm going to just keep continuing to admit people and we could get started, Tim. Yeah, that sounds good. So why don't we just start in the beginning? Why? Why should people get involved in a critique group? Yeah, um, I think the logic for them is sort of twofold. Um, and I, I sort of always bring it back to the fact that um, it's social and it's scheduled, um, which are two things that really are helpful for writers. Um, and I say this often, so you know, people know me, they've probably heard me say this before, but language is social. Uh, so if you're writing in a vacuum, um, then it's, uh, it's, you're more apt to fail at the, the ultimate goal of writing, which is to connect with other people. Um, that said, I think it's fair every once in a while to, you know, there's a certain project where it's fair to say, I'm gonna sequester myself for a while. Um, I'm going to take a year to write this whole thing and then I'll come back to it uh, and then connect with people. So. You know, that truth of language being social and the need to connect with people and resonate with people. Um, critique groups aren't the only way uh, for that uh, connection to happen. Um, and so certainly there are some projects that um, <clears throat> will benefit from you waiting a while. Um, I also think, you know, it's just, it's true that um, it's, it's possible to take work to a critique group too soon and it's also possible to take it to a critique group too late. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are instances in which, you know, maybe uh, the logic of the critique group, the critique group is maybe not the best solution for what you need right now. Um, if you take it too early, um, you know, you have sort of a half-baked story or there's, it has all sorts of flaws that you know of, um, then you're just not, you're not utilizing other people to uh, your greatest advantage, which is to sort of help you see things that you don't see. So if you're taking it to them and then they come back with all this feedback and your response is, well, yeah, I knew all of that. Um, it's maybe not the best use of, of that possibility. Well, may I ask you a side, question? Sure. Before you continue. So you're suggesting that you wait till your work is completed before you get in a critique group rather than have them help you along the way? No, not necessarily. Um, I think especially for like a first time novelist, I think writing a novel um, with a critique group, basically taking chapters at a time to your critique group is probably a good thing. Okay. Um, but for second time novelists or for people who feel that they really just need to, you know, sort of gain more confidence in their project before they're sharing it with people. Um, I think it's valid uh, in, certain cer in certain instances to say, I'm gonna wait and then, you know, use the social aspects later. Okay, um, thank you. Let me, let me interrupt here. Um, Sandy, could you mute? yourself we're gonna wait until the end for questions thank you okay that's what i didn't know thank you yeah um and also you guys if you would put your questions in the chat we can be looking at them as we go along and then you know if it's pertinent to what we're talking about we'll go ahead and answer it if not we'll wait till the end and try to get to all the questions so um yeah sometimes you want feedback on just a maybe the beginning of your work to see if it's something that is interesting to people, if people will want to read on, if it's engaging. So, you know, critique groups can work at all different times in your process, right, Tim? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And I think they're just a really great way to learn. Um, 
about your writing and how it's how other people are sort of uh, perceiving your writing, right? Right. Um, I was going to say, you know, it's possible to take it too late. If you've worked on, say, a short story for 20 iterations and you, you're pretty sure it's done. Um, and, you know, un unless you've like, you know, it's, it's gotten 70 rejections and then you want to know why, um, then you could take it to the group. But, you know, if you feel like, okay, this is done, I'm really proud of it. That, I, that's not something to take to the critique group because they're sort of, you know, I think we'll talk about this later, but they're, the, the task of the critique group is to um, talk about things that can be improved or that people perceive can be improved, right? And right. so they're always going to do that, um, no matter what you give them. You could give them a published story from the New Yorker and they're gonna tear it apart because that's what you're tasking them to do, right? Exactly, yeah. So yeah, yeah. so that's just something to keep in mind that maybe you don't always want to, um, take your projects to a critique group if you're not ready for that, if you don't want that from them. And if you think that your project is ready, it should go to an editor, not a critique group. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I do think there's something to be said for just um, kind of getting accustomed to regular feedback too, and that's part of the social piece of this, um, is that writing is just, it's a vocation that requires a really healthy attitude toward criticism and toward feedback. Um, so critique groups sort of exercise that muscle. Right. Um, so that's kind of the social piece of it. And I think the other really compelling reason for critique groups is um, just the schedule, that it's this regular commitment to producing writing and or to considering other people's writing. So it just keeps you sort of, uh, it exercises those muscles. Um, there have been times in my life where uh, when the only thing keeping me uh, like writing and keeping me sort of fresh is that I have expectations from my critique group to turn something in. And I've always found it um, much harder to let other people down than then to let myself down, you know? Right. Um, so when other people have that expectation over me, um, I don't want to disappoint them. Right. It's a great motivator. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I think that many of us need that during this time. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not finding this the most, my most creative time. Right. Um, and so when you have a critique group or you have a writing buddy, um, that's a great motivator to, to keep working. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So what are the benefits? We've talked a little about the social aspect. Um, right, some right. of the other benefits. Yeah, and really, I, I mean, I guess when I talk about the logic of a critique group, it is sort of based on this platonic ideal of the group, which is that it's, um, that it's a mutually supportive, insightful group, um, and that they're all giving you some help, right? And that they're all, so, that is, I mean, the, the sort of elephant in the room with critique groups is they don't always live up to that expectation. Um, that's what you want. That's the ideal. But sometimes you won't get that, um, which is not then an argument against critique groups. It's that you need a different one. Right. And so it does take some searching, I think, to find uh, kind of the right mix of people. Um, it, which doesn't always mean, I've had other people say, like, I want to be sure that I'm in a group where everyone's better than me, which is, which is fine, except that that's an impossible scenario, right? That's like an MC Escher sketch of, like, <laughs> always going up the staircase, right? So, um, so yeah, I, I do think, you know, we're looking for this sort of ideal, and when you get to it, um, and I've been in groups where it is very, it's mutually supportive, and it's mutually insightful, um, and it's great. Um, and so if you don't have that, you know, keep, keep looking because they're out there. Um, but the benefit. Also, you know, you might have a critique group where maybe there are five, six people um, and you're not going to, every, every person's critique is not equal. Exactly. So, you know, it's up to you to decide if the criticism, not criticism, but the critique works yeah. for you. 
because right. it, you know, people have their perspective, they have their genre, they have whatever. So it might be that three out of the five are really good for you. And that could right. work too. Yeah, and I also wouldn't then, I would, I would guard against, you know, judging a person in the critique group is like, oh, they don't, they're not helpful, period. Because like, it's not just a, you know, the quality of, of feedback, um, you know, we, all of us as writers, we tend to be strong in certain areas and weak in other areas, and those don't match up, right? So, you know, there might be someone who is, is you know, a nine or a 10 on a scale from one to 10 um, with certain things like setting or character development, um, but they're not great with plotting, for instance, right? So they maybe don't give you the best feedback in terms of what's going on with the sort of tension and momentum of the plot, but they do have great feedback in other realms. So I'm just saying like, you know, you can't just say, oh, this person's a five and this person's a nine, like, well, there are five in some areas and a 10 in other areas. And so you don't just discount them wholesale. You say, okay, yeah, there's certain things they're going to focus on and be really effective with. Right, right. Um, but benefits, uh, one is sort of alluded to already is accountability. Um, it gives you that, um, that regular meeting time and it motivates you to get something done. Um, and I've also alluded to just the practice with handling feedback. Um, I think you need to get accustomed to it because even if you are a seasoned uh, multiple published writer, um, that editing and revision process is never gonna go away. Um, and it's always gonna feel a little crappy, um, you know, when people say like, this isn't working and you've worked on something for hours and hours, right? Um, or to have the book written and it's 90,000 words and they say, okay, cool. We need to cut 20,000 words, right? Right. Um, so, you know, and you look, you think back at like 20,000 words, like how much time did that take me, you know? So it's yeah, gonna constantly better, happen. But better your critique group says that than an editor or an agent, you know, right. because right. they're gonna ask you the same, they're gonna say the same thing, 90,000 words, especially if you're a first time um, author, that's really hard right. to tell, you know, so. Right, depending on the genre, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it's great that your critique group tells you that. Right, right. But it is hard to hear criticism. Um, it it, you know, I'm really good at it because I believe everything that I ever write needs editing. Yeah. So, um, so it doesn't really bother me. And I also know that I'm not going to take all the criticism to heart. I'm not going to use it all, but I'm going to consider it. Right. So, but for other people, it's really difficult to hear anything bad about their writing. Yeah. Right. And so that's, it's that critique groups may not be for those people. Maybe not, but it is, you know, it's, it's a realm in which you can practice that. Right. And it does have, as you say, it has lower stakes than if an editor or agent tells you that sort of stuff, right? And so, you know, even if you're a little gun shy with that sort of thing, I think critique groups are a good sort of practice ground for hearing that feedback and for, you know, just experiencing how it feels and sort of getting accustomed. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The other, there's, there's kind of two other things that I think are the kind of less obvious benefits of a critique group. And one is that, it's they're, they're really a great place to learn about craft. Um, you know, and, I, and I've been thinking a lot about this as a sort of writing instructor um, that we use, we use exemplary work all the time. And it's, it's good instruction, right? To say like, here's an example of what I'm talking about. Here's what it looks like when, for instance, um, you know, exposition, right? Here's information and look at how it's incorporated in this story. So it's not just an info dump. And then we look at a good example of that. Um, and so relying on sort of that exemplary work um, that is you know, either commercially successful or critically acclaimed, uh, it's good. I'm not saying teachers shouldn't do that, but what we have a problem with doing because it's just sort of awkward is, is finding pieces that don't work and that have problems and then using those 
with students to say, okay, now look at this, here's what's not working, here's where this fails, and how can we improve that? And critique groups allow you to see that in not only in your own work, but in others' work. And sometimes you actually see someone bring a second draft back and you see what they've done with something. And so I just think, you know, they, they provide something that craft books and even sometimes classes can't, which is to see writing that has potential but not success. And I think we really need to get comfortable with that idea of like, what is, what is the difference between writing with potential but, but not successful writing, right? right. And how, how do you bridge that gap? Because that's everyone's goal, right? Absolutely. Um, and then the other thing is just developing, and I often tell people this is the true value of a, a critique group, is developing your own editing abilities. Um, you, you get good at feedback, or you can if you're really putting the effort into it. And I think when you do um, that, again, you're sort of working those muscles to apply to your own work and your own editing. Absolutely, you learn something with every piece that you read and you analyze and you think about, you learn something about your own writing when you're doing that. Definitely. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the challenges. Yeah, and you know, a big one is the one that we've already sort of alluded to, which is just tastes and personalities. Um, you know, and, and I think, you know, if people have been in a critique group, chances are they've been in a group with at least one person whose just attitudes or approach just differs radically from ours. Right. Um, and I should say that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it's a challenge. So, you know, I, I, that's why I call it sort of a challenge rather than, you know, a con. It's not like an argument against the critique group. Um, and, and so, you know, it's, we can still learn from those people. Um, they still have some value. Um, I'm in a wonderful writing group right now. And there's certainly one writer who's, you know, just a little bit off in her reading of my writing, um, you know, and just sees it differently and sort of, you know, if everyone thought, had the same impression, I'd think, okay, I'm not quite getting across. But then there's three other people who are like, oh no, this is what it was about. And, you know, but the one is just consistently sort of like kind of missing the mark. And, but it's fine because there's other things she's really great with, right? Right. Um, you know, so taste, personality, um, if, there's, if there's some sort of clash in tastes and personality, like that's fine because again, that's sort of, that's real world writing. You know, there's, there are stories out there, uh, books, short stories, movies, et cetera, uh, that are successful. And that, you know, I mean, you know, we can talk about uh, recent books or re recent movies. You can talk about that with people whose tastes you align with mostly. And there still can be disagreement, you know? Right. How um, many bestsellers have you looked at and they're on the, all the lists and they're getting all of the publicity. Right. And so you say, okay, I have to check this out. And then you read it and you say, really? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's right. so subjective. Right. So in some ways, you know, that's a, I mean, it almost comes back to a benefit. If you have that varied opinion within the group, um, and if there's someone whose whose tastes and attitudes are sort of radically different from yours, that's really it. Really, is not necessarily a bad thing. It really, can be kind of helpful, but it is a challenge because you know it can it can make you. Uh, I mean, it can make you sort of doubt yourself more, right? Like to have that one person, even if they're sort of consistently um, not quite aligned with your tastes, to have them always always there um, can just sort of get you doubting, but. Um, so something to be aware of. Um, the other thing that's somewhat of a challenge is just the plethora of opinion. Um, certainly I've had the experience where after a session, 
with even a small writing group, I can come back and feel like, oh God, I just need to go back to the drawing board. Like this is, uh, this is all crap. I can't save any of it, you know? And it can be sort of paralyzing. Um, and again, this is something that I think ultimately is kind of a good thing, but it, it can be a challenge because it can feel overwhelming. And, and I always tell people part of this challenge is um, to digest slowly, to give it a day or two after getting feedback. Right. And then to sort of sift through it. And we can talk more about this later, but to, to sift through it and to see, okay, what, what in here do I really need to listen to? And what, what really feels right and jives with what I'm thinking about this story? And what in here feels like, ah, okay, yeah, I think there's, I think I'm going to just be content to have that be a, a disconnection between the two of us. Exactly. Um, yeah, but that plethora of opinion um, can really feel, uh, you know, one person might say, and I've had this experience where, you know, one person said, well, I really love this story, except the beginning just felt a little slow to me, you know, and then everyone else said, oh, no, I thought the beginning was great. But then one of them said, but it just sort of sagged in the middle, you know, and then the third one's like, I mean, I, thought I was really gripped until the end. I just think it didn't deliver, you know, That's, and of course, yeah. your mentality then as a writer is like, okay, so it's basically failing in the beginning, the middle and the end, <laughs> but it's not. That's not what they told you, right? Yeah, it's really hard to listen to all those opinions. That's why when when Tim puts together the critique groups for anyone who is interested, we're doing four or five at most, right, Tim? Right, four or because, five people. You know, if you if you get too many opinions, it's too confusing and it's frustrating and it's discouraging. So right. You, you, get, you have to get to know the people you're in the group with. Maybe one time isn't going to work. Maybe you need to try it a second or a third time to know. But mm -hmm. after a while, you learn whose opinion kind of meshes with your own aesthetic. And, you know, that's, that's what we need to remember and not take everything to heart. Right, right. And consider it all. Right. Consider like consider every, it each time. Right. Absolutely. So it's not like I'm going to just sort of write off like every time Samantha gives me feedback, like anything dealing with setting, she's horrible at it. And so I'm never going to listen to her. Like you always, you always listen to it. And, and I have no idea, by the way, if Samantha's good or bad with setting stuff. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> great. In fact, have some idea and she's not, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Just as a hypothetical, a hypothetical example, but yeah, so the, it does, there is a matter of uh, sort of analyzing the analysis. Um, I think another challenge is, and I've already alluded to this too, it, it is kind of a fault finding mission. Um, and when you take your work to the, to the group, the understanding is they're gonna try to make it better, which is predicated on the assumption that, um, that it can be better, right? That there are problems with it. So they're looking for problems. Um, and there's a focus on sort of deficiencies, faults, problems, um, optimistically opportunities for improvement. Um, but it does, it just has that whole attitude. And the understanding is if you bring it to them, uh, that's what they're looking for. Um, and again, a good thing too, but also a challenge and something to keep in mind in terms of uh, deciding what work you're going to give to the group. Right. Right. I don't, um, I don't necessarily think that all, all the people in a critique group are looking uh, for problems. I think sometimes, you know, if people, if people think that this passage works, they'll tell you that. And then, you know, maybe there are one or two things, small things um, that they'll talk about. But I don't think everyone is really looking for things to improve. I think they're just looking if it work, if it works, if they want to keep reading, you know, and then maybe there are some small things that they attend to. So I don't think you're always going to get 
criticism, you're going to get right. great feedback too. You know, it's going to be a combination and, and that's what we all need, I think. Yeah, I think the ideal for sure is that there's a combination of that and that. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the better the group, the more comfortable they, they are with one another, um, the, the more confidence they'll have to say, look, I really don't have much to say to you because this is, this is working. Good job. Right. Um, but I, you know, I, I think a lot of people approach the group as um, I'm not doing a good enough job if I don't give them something yes. to focus on. So that's kind of more what I'm saying is like, you know, there's that feeling that you need to tell them something um, that they can take away and improve upon. Um, and I think you're right that no, you need to tell them like, you know, is this successful? Um, and if it is, they should know that and they should um, come away from it knowing like, okay, in this case, you don't have that much work to do. Right. And, you know, the, um, the other thing is that I just lost my train of thought. Continue, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the last challenges is just time and energy. Um, that it takes time and energy to uh, meaningfully interact with someone else's work. Um, yeah. This is not the same as just like picking out a book and reading 20 pages of it. Um, it takes longer. You have to really put some thought into it. Um, and if you're really gonna get the benefit out of giving feedback and giving practice with that, and then being able to transfer that to your own writing, you have to treat it as if it is your own writing. And you have to think about, okay, what really, I really got to dig into this and think, where can this improve? What's working? What's not? Why is it working? And why is it not? And those why questions are harder. And they take some careful consideration. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, one other thing, um, one other challenge, I think, is that um, sometimes the people with the least experience have the most confidence. Yeah. So, you know, they're very sure about their opinion of your work. And I think as you get to know the personalities of the people you're in the group with, you understand that. Mm. And, you know, that's another example of something you need to just be aware of and mm -hmm. be conscious of. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's actually a term for that. I'm there forgetting. it is. I forget. Some what it is. Knows. Yeah, some sort of syndrome or something that. Yeah, the people <laughs> who tend to be least competent at things have the most confidence in what they're doing. Right. <laughs> um. Yeah, and the, the there it is, the Dunning Kruger syndrome. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, um, cool. Thanks, Victoria. Um, <laughs> so yeah. let's talk about how to give criticism, which is a, a talent. Definitely. And one that you can develop and definitely improve at by yes. practicing it, right? Yeah, I mean, my first piece of advice is always kind of along, along the lines of what you just said, uh, which is to be unconfident, to coin a phrase. Um, offer advice with some hedging language, like maybe, possibly, uh, perhaps. Um, I tend to ask a lot of questions, you know, like, might this work better if um, maybe you could do this? Um, and, and I'm just sort of aware and I remind the writer, like I might be the only one who thinks this way, especially when I'm talking about it to them. Like maybe this is just me. Um, and a lot of the groups that I run, um, the, the uh, everyone, like pretty much everyone in the, in the group sort of kind of speaks that way, right? Like maybe this is just me, I might be the only one. Um, and so you're right, like the, the better people are, the more I find that there's this attitude of, um, that they know like, I'm not the arbiter of what's good. Um, I'm giving my impression um, and I'm not trying to change your work to be mine. I'm trying to honor your goals and not force my sort of vision upon it. 
Um, and I know I'm always at risk of that. So here's my impression. Here's a possibility. Here's what I'm seeing. Here are the questions this is bringing up for me. Um, and you can consider this and see, you know, if other people are having these same sort of questions, maybe that's something you want to dig into. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I do this for a living. I teach and edit writing, and I'm always sort of approaching it as like, maybe I'm wrong, you know? Right. I mean, I, I thought Bridgerton was horrible. <laughs> and yet, <laughs> you know, if I was the arbiter, it would never would have made it into production. And yet it's out there and it's doing quite well. So I am wrong in some form, <laughs> right? Well, there's um, Simon and he, I'm sure you don't appreciate him the way some of us do. <laughs> um, so that's one thing is to uh, sort of lack confidence, know that you're just giving impressions. Um, I, I also like this thing I saw recently of like, and this kind of goes with the, the fault finding thing, instead of the attitude of like, what's wrong here? It's the attitude of how can we make this the best possible version that it can be, right? How can we make this better? And so just that attitude, it's, it's almost obvious, but you know, I've been in groups where clearly not everyone had this attitude of the goal is to build people up, not tear them down. Right. right. And I think if you don't have everyone in the group committed to that, as the goal, um, then, I mean, you need a different group or that person needs to go. Cause that is, that's an absolute, for me, that's a, that's just a, a non-starter. If you don't have that attitude, I, I can't have you in the group, right? right? I think that, you know, it's really important in a critique group for everyone to be honest, mm -hmm. but it's also important for everyone to be kind. Definitely. And it's, it's only our perspective. When we're giving uh, a critique, it's only our perspective. Right. And so, as you say, couch it in kind terms. You know, this may be just me, but this is how I feel and this is what I'm seeing. Um, but, but also it's really important to be honest about it because you're looking to encourage people and you want them to succeed and you don't succeed if you're not getting honest commentary right right yeah and i think the honest commentary and the other thing i would say in terms of you know kind of point number three in terms of giving criticism is to put some th serious thought into it right yeah. again to sort of think about what what's working for you or not and why and I think a subset of that is make sure you're putting just as much thought into and specifying what is working versus what isn't. And you sort of got kind of alluded to this earlier. Um, I, was, I was in a, one of my critique groups that I run sort of as an instructor. Um, we spend sort of half the time talking about what works and we sort of begin with that and then we move to success, suggestions or questions. I always phrase it as suggestions or questions versus what's not working. Um, so we, we're, we're moving through uh, what's working and this one writer, she's pretty funny. Um, you know, we all kind of get done with that and she says, but, <laughs> and then expects us to sort of unload on, uh, whoops, uh, unload on her with in terms of what wasn't working. And in this case, it was like, well, no, actually there's, I mean, there was more that was working that wasn't. Um, and you're, you're just sort of predisposed to think, okay, yeah, but what wasn't working and I nearly need. So it is, and as, as the writer being critiqued, make sure you're listening to that. Make sure you're paying attention to that and figuring out what is working and what is really hitting the mark with people. Right. Um, you know, but you, got, the other you, you have to specify that stuff as the critiquer. And, and one of the other things that you have to keep in mind is that people are not reading your work in a linear fashion. So you might be sending them, you know, right. chapter one, chapter five, maybe they've forgotten by the time they've gotten to chapter five, they've gotten forgotten chapters one through four. 
Right. So, I mean, it's really difficult to keep it all in your head if you're not reading it all at once. Yep. So you, you have to consider the feedback in that regard also. Absolutely, right. Which maybe is maybe coming back to kind of one of the challenges or limits of the critique groups, which is you don't always, with each excerpt you're getting, you're often lacking the, the running start, as I say, right? The, yeah. the full sort of context. And so you may think, like we often run up against this of like, well, I didn't know who this was, um, but like anyone who's read the first chapters would know who that was. So that's a, it's a non-issue, right? But you can just say like, well, I wasn't sure who this was. Did you, will this have been explained? And just leave it at that. And we don't need to fixate on it. But right. yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. I think too, like, I think someone in the chat said something about, um, you know, every once in a while it's nice to give uh, when you're submitting something to the group to ask them for some specific things to look for. And that is, that is nice. Yes. Um, and I, I tend to say, barring that, if people haven't done that, to, to focus on the bigger stuff, kind of the movement of the story, um, you know, what's, are the characters resonating with you? Does it seem to have tension and momentum? That sort of macro level stuff because I think errors in punctuation, suggestions on word choice, like you can mark that up in the manuscript, but they're hardly ever worth like talking about in the group. Right. You know, like I remember an early writing group I was in ages ago where we spent like five minutes talking about whether all right should be one word or two. And I was just so <laughs> aggravated with the guy who brought that up. Like, I don't care. Like, this is why are we, why would we discuss this? You know, and it was just like, can you just please tell me if the story is working, right? So critique is not proofreading. And I think that's another thing that like, you know, you get the Dunning-Kruger effect uh, with the, the sort of people who haven't done it much and are very confident. And that's the other thing you get is like, you get people who think, oh, I'm just gonna proofread this. I can't really tell you if your story is working, but I can tell you if you should have a comma or a semicolon here. And so right. they just fall back on that. And it's like, you know, that's a skill set, but it's probably not the one you need to bring to the critique group. Exactly. Exactly. Um, we're getting close to, um, let's see, is there, what else do we need to discuss? We're getting close to the time where we should start talking about how we're going to put together groups and mm -hmm. answer some of the questions. So, yeah. Um, I know you well, we talked about giving criticism, and I think there's a few things maybe just about how to receive it. Yes, yes. Um, and I do think like it's important to um, to be receptive, right? Um, don't get defensive. Don't make excuses. Um, I've been in groups uh, where the rule was put into place either by an instructor running the group or the group itself that like the person getting feedback couldn't speak until the end of it. And I'm not quite that strict when I run groups by myself, but, or on my sort of my instructional groups. Um, so I don't, I don't think that's a necessary rule to follow, but I do think that just, the, it, it does put you in this mindset of like, your number one job is to listen right now. Um, and I think along with that, and sometimes that means like, ask clarifying questions, right? And say, you know, but I think along with that, take notes. Um, Cause I think it's impossible to assimilate all of the feedback you're getting in the short time that you have. And so I'm just furiously scribbling, scribbling notes when my, my, my work is being critiqued. Um, and some of it sinks in later. Like some of it, I, I'm like, I don't quite know what you're saying right now. I might ask a question. Um, or it might just be something that I, I need to look at later, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it helps sometimes to, to ask people, um, you know, if they're saying like, you know, occasionally I've thought that your character's interiority was just a little, you know, I don't know, they give some evaluation of it to say, okay, can you, can you mark a few of those for me? And then you can look at them when they send you the manuscript. Um, so requesting that. Mm -hmm. um, and then as we talked about some analysis of the analysis, when you get back comments on your piece and you look at your own notes, 
for me, it's like, I need to take a day or two. And then I come back to it a day or two later. And then I go through it and think, okay, this is a really good point. I basically go through and like circle things and highlight them and put little stars by notes and stuff. Think, ah, this is, I definitely need to pay attention to this. Or like, you know, three people mentioned this and, you know, and other things where I'll think, I'll put parentheses around them as like a maybe, you know? And then other things where it's like, oh, I'm gonna cross this out because I took a note of it, but then I remember in the group, somebody brought that up as like a maybe and then everyone else disagreed with them. And so we sort of ruled that out, right? To just sort of go through after the fact and do a postpartum, uh, sort of postmortem, sorry, sorry, a postmortem on like, here's, here's what's working or not. There is a certain amount of postpartum with birthing the story, but. Um, yes, so, it, you know, it's really hard to hear a lot of um, critiques about your work and not go away saying, oh my God, I should just throw this in the trash. Right. And I, you know, I have felt that, but you, like you say, you have to sit back and you have to listen and you have to process it and it's not all going to resonate with you. Right. And that's okay because everyone is only giving their opinion. Exactly. So, exactly. yeah. And I think that's another big piece of receiving the criticism is after what, afterwards, give yourself a little time. Yes. It is an emotional thing. Um, you know, even for seasoned writers, and I'm, I've been in writing groups for a long time, and it's still, you know, every once in a while, just sort of, you know, it irks me. It can be an emotional thing. Yeah. So don't be reactionary. Allow yourself a day or two. Um, it's okay to be discouraged for a day or two, and then get to work, and then come back to the suggestions and you know, once you're a little less emotional with it and sort of, again, do that analysis of the analysis and start just sort of making sense of like, okay, here's what people have actually told me and here's what I can work on and here's what I'm not sure how to tackle and here's how, um, and here's the stuff that maybe I'll set aside for now, right? Exactly. So let's talk about um, setting up their critique groups. Yeah, so what we'll do is um, people can sign up and there'll be a, a, a link um, where they can go to a Google form and just kind of fill that out. Actually, I'm going to, um, they're going to get that um, a little later this evening. Everyone will get yeah. that link to the Google form. Okay, so they'll get that link and they fill that out, name, email, some other questions. Um, that's used for nothing other than forming these groups. You're not subscribing to the need list or anything with that. Um, it's exclusively for that. And, um, and basically I'll take that information and I will put together groups of four or five people. Um, and the logic here is that it's a uh, kind of a trial. It's just sort of testing it out. You're together with those people. Um, you're adults and so you'll figure out how to meet and where and when. Um, and so, you know, I asked you in the, in the form um, if there's someone who's sort of comfortable sort of as the scheduler, um, and if there's another person who can run the tech, whether they have Zoom or some other uh, Google Meet or something like that, that they can uh, use to get people together. Usually I would say over some sort of video chat like this, because it's helpful to see sort of people's reactions or sort of like raising their hand, et cetera. Um, and so, yeah, so four or five people getting together um, and I just kind of call it a trial. Like you'll get together, what I recommend is like, at least for this first meeting is having people submit five pages double spaced um, so that it's not too much um, and having everyone do that. Normally in most groups that I run or I've been a part of, we submit like 20 pages from maybe two people max um, per meeting. But in this first meeting, um, and you could certainly do that if you wanted to go on meeting with this group. But for this first meeting, I'd say five, uh, which most people say is you know, not quite enough. Um, but again, it's just sort of a test. Five pages you submit, uh, you critique then everyone over the course of two hours. So it goes pretty quickly. Um, and it's maybe not as involved as you might be with a 20 page excerpt. Um, so it's sort of this trial where you get to test out with a small, piece of your writing, you know, how other people are responding to it. And then you also are giving that feedback to other people. 
And then if it works, you might get, as you said, you might, you might get a writing, writing buddy out of it like you did with Chuck, or you might figure out like, hey, this was really great. We all really sort of clicked. And then you just figure out like, okay, let's meet again in two weeks or in a month or whatever sort of timeline you want. Um, yeah, you know, it was really interesting because Tim has done this already and I was involved and I mentioned this earlier, but people might, might not have been on the Zoom yet. But so Tim was doing two critique groups at that time. You would be joined with one group and then you would have another group. And the first group was great, but I didn't feel, I was thinking at that time that I wasn't really needing a critique group. So I kind of opted out of that. And I said to Tim, you know, I think I'm not gonna go into round two because I don't think a critique group is what I need. And Tim said, well, you know, maybe you should just try it again. And there might be someone who, you know, you could pair up with, or you might enjoy this group. And so I said, okay, all right, let's do it again. And then I was in another group with um, four other people and it was great. And so now I'm in, I'm in that group, which I never would, ex would have expected, but that one worked really well. And I'm, in a, I'm a writing buddy with one of the people in the first group. So, you know, you have to test these things out. And when you meet with this initial group and we're only doing one group this time, but think about if you want to pair up with one person, if you want to be with the entire group, um, however it works for you. And, you know, it's kind of hard to, what happens if someone says, yes, let's meet again and you're not so hot on the group. So if you want some really kind ways to refuse, we'll send you some, some suggestions. <laughs> but, um, you know, it doesn't work for everyone. So you can just say it's not for me at this time, but thank you. Yeah, so I would set up, what I would do is I would set up this one group and then it's sort of up to you to say, okay, let's do this again or to bow out um, and then to figure out your own schedule. Um, and I don't know, like the writing group that I'm in, we meet once a month. Writing groups that I run meet like every two or three weeks. Um, there's a question here about how often groups usually meet. Samantha, when you've been in groups, how often do you meet? You know, it varies. Um, some meet once a month, some meet, you know, every other week. But for me, every other week is really intense. So yeah, I intense. think in once a month is a really good. But, you know, there might be people who want more than that. So it depends on your right. group. Right. And um, there's a question here from Genevieve. Um, and I'm just sort of, I haven't been tuning into the chat uh, until now, but um, will it be up to us to figure out the structure? Pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'll send you sort of a suggestion. Uh, once I've put the groups together, I'll send you a suggestion for how to structure the first one at least. Um, and you know, you can take it or leave it. I'm not gonna, you won't get downgraded if you, uh, if you don't follow my suggestion. There's really, there's absolutely no supervision from me uh, after I set the groups uh, up, so that's all. Right. Um, LT Ward asked, what would be the difference between finding a strong beta reader and participating in a critique group? That's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. Yeah, I tend, to think, I tend to think of beta readers uh, more as um, for looking at the whole thing, right? So for a novel or a short story, you write it mostly for novels where we're looking at beta readers and you write the whole thing and then you send it out to a beta reader or two or three uh, or five and you get there and usually with some specific sort of questions on what to look for um, and um, and then they get back to you after having read the whole thing um, it's a rare generally speaking critique groups are a little bit more um, just sort of designed to handle uh, piecemeal stuff so a chapter at a time or a short story or an essay uh, for each meeting 
uh, rather than a whole novel. So, you know, I really think that's a kind of the main thing. And I think the other thing is, I think I would almost always recommend, unless this person has done beta, beta reading for you before, I would almost always recommend having specific focused questions and not many, like five for a beta reader. Um, and as we talked about, you can do that with a critique group, but I think, especially once you get comfortable with them and you're meeting more regularly, um, that that's, you rarely need to do that. You can just sort of give it to them and say, you know, tell me what you think about this. And they, they know to take it from there. Right. Um, Allison said, is it Allison? Yes, she said that she was the junior member of a group, but participating in that group was really good um, and for her to help her grow. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important point is that, you know, it, it, you don't wanna be intimidated by, if you're in a group with someone who's published, it doesn't matter. If you're right. in a group with people who have never published, it doesn't matter. Everyone has a perspective. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone, we all come at this as a reader. We're all readers. If we're writers, we're all readers. And we mm -hmm. know what we like and we know what we look for. And all of that feedback is so valuable. Um. <clears throat> Someone here, Susan, maybe, uh, can you offer some suggestions on structure? What I do with the critique, so I run a couple critique groups um, that are sort of instructional. So people pay me and then I give them some tips uh, kind of at the end of our time. But, and in that one, we do two pieces uh, every time we meet. And it's a two hour meeting, um, which I think is kind of the upper limit of what I would recommend for um, a critique group. Um, my writing group, the one I'm in, um, that's about what we do too, is like an hour and a half, two hours. Sometimes it stretches over that, if we're, especially if we're just sort of chatting about other things. But, and we do tend to, in the group, sort of get together, just sort of check in with one another, you know, especially like any writing related news. Um, and sometimes we can't help but just sort of, uh, you know, talk about how um, exhausted we are from this, the virus and stuff like that. But, and, and so sort of like, you know, decompression for five, 10 minutes, and then we get into, okay, here's the first piece. Um, and I usually say, what's working? And we spend uh, 15, 20 minutes on that. And then um, once everyone has sort of chimed in on that, um, and I tend to, you know, when I'm running a group like that, I tend to, uh, the, the etiquette is sort of like, you should really be speaking up. Um, so once everyone said something, then I say, okay, what questions or suggestions do we have? And then we spend 20, 25, 30 minutes on that. Um, and then we move on to the next one and we do the same thing. Um, that's the general structure that I tend to use. Um, and, you know, is more or less the structure with my writing group. We do one piece at a time. It's one person uh, rather than two. Um, and if it was, you know, many people, it was four or five people. I would just figure out like, okay, we wanna be done in two hours. And so we really need to do this at the pace of about 20, 25 minutes per person. Um, so we're gonna go pretty quickly. Um, and you may even say, let's say, you know, let's, 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 I nominate Samantha to be the timekeeper and she'll just tell us, okay, we're at 20 minutes. So let's try to wrap it up. Um, Cause if you don't have some, you know, somewhat rigid thing for like the four to five group uh, where everyone's submitting it. If you don't have some schedule that you really ad are adhering to, um, you know, you're going to get, everyone's going to be exhausted after two and a half hours and then someone's going to get short shrifted, you know, so, so keeping to that sort of schedule with, with a lot, but the general structure I would say is one or two people up for critique, um, what's working, what isn't. And then after that, I usually say, okay, now what questions do you have for the group? And then the writer can say, you know, oh, can you just clarify this? Or what did you guys think? Nobody said anything about this thing. What did you think about this, et cetera? Right. right. But for these initial groups that Tim's going to be putting together, we're suggesting a two hour block of time and people submit five pages each and everyone talks about them. And 
that has worked out that it is about two hours, but um, so, and then going forward, you can determine how you want your group to go, how many people should submit, right? Um, you know, how long the sessions will be. So it'll vary depending on what people's preferences are. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Bruce mentioned that his preference is for brutal feedback. He said he wanted to know what people think and he'd rather have people be very direct on what's not working and what is. So mm -hmm. the trick is allowing it not to be personal. And that's a really right. important right. thing. It, it's so, you can't take it personally. It's hard not to. But right. You need to try. You know, I didn't have a chance to introduce Tim. I'm sure you all know him, but Tim runs um, Storm Writing School and he does critique groups. He is an editor. He is, he is like the biggest writing nerd I know. <laughs> really, when he, <laughs> when some of his posts are so technical about writing i just my eyes sort of glaze over but he's so smart and so you should um look him up i i'm sure his link is in the emails that you have gotten it'll be in the next one and tim can he's a magician he edits he consults he teaches he's so smart so um, are there any questions that we have forgotten or anything that you want to let people know, Tim? Um, no, I'm just looking at, do we have anything else in the chat that we haven't gotten to? And if we have time for it? Yeah, uh, we have a couple of minutes. Um, yes. Okay. I have a question. Do you think, Tim, that it's better to return to school and take writing classes maybe towards a degree than do something like getting in a group and just see where that goes? Uh, it sort of depends on where you are with your writing. Um, and if, you, if you're if you more toward the beginner end or just starting off, then I would highly recommend starting with uh, critique groups um, and I mean, in fact, you know, for a lot of going back to school and MFA sort of situations, yeah, you need you need letters of recommendation from people who kind of know what they're doing. So classes, oh, sure. um, critique groups, just getting yourself out there and doing um, workshops, all of that before uh, going back to school. But if you've done a lot of that, um, and you really just the the benefit of like an MFA is that it you can pretty much do everything in an MFA on your own. It's just a matter of, you know, there's like 2% of the people who have the discipline to do all that, all of that on their own. Right. Yeah. So, okay. um, but you can, you can, you can find mentors, you can read craft books, you can set your own schedule, you can join workshops, et cetera. You can get excellent beta readers. You can do a lot of it for free. Uh, it's just that um, you have to do the legwork and getting that together. Um, and you need a lot of self-discipline and an MFA just sort of forces you into here's what you're doing and you have deadlines and you have schedules and uh, here's a bunch of other people that you don't have to go out and search for who are at a pretty high level already. Um, so there's a lot of uh, benefit to doing that, but I think I would start with at least some um, uh, some searching out of critique groups and uh, workshops on your own first, yeah. And Stacy asked, how does one know when it's time to join a critique group? Uh, good question. I think, you know, when you were talking about, um, you know, this sort of offer to kind of, for this whole thing where we're putting together groups of four or five, I don't think there's a lot to lose with this. Right. Um, I just don't see a lot of, you know, it's, it's a trial. You're, you're testing it out. Um, and I, there's very few people who I would say, uh, you're not ready for a critique group. Um, almost everyone I would say, yeah, absolutely. Give it a try. Um, 
And again, keeping in mind, like if this one doesn't work, that doesn't mean critique groups are out. It just means you got to find kind of the, the right people for where you're at right now. Right. So I would say everyone's ready. I think so too. And I think now is a particularly good time to join one, just to have the companionship and the networking and the feedback and the connection. So sure. Samantha, uh, you're going to give us this information to join a, a, join a critique group? You, you will get it um, soon after this ends. Everyone okay. who uh, registered you. will get the information. Okay, thank you. And then Tim, like in the next week, you'll have the groups formed? Yep. Okay, but don't you're closing the, you're cl We're closing the Google form. Uh, by what tomorrow at noon I think tomorrow at noon so you'll get it like in an hour you'll get the form and you just need to fill it out by noon tomorrow yeah so get on it pretty quickly but yeah. so yeah. we send it back to you Samantha you'll the instructions will be in there okay thank you yeah, yeah. it's online oh. you just fill it out and submit and then you're done okay thank you yeah. so if I haven't started actually writing anything yet um would this be like like an incentive to like write five pages and start start in and sure um would you suggest that i do that or would you suggest that i wait a little while no i'd say go for it especially with okay. this trial there's no, there's really nothing to lose and it'll okay. get you to write something um and you know even with a critique group uh, sort of a longer term thing i mean the writing group i'm in um that's, you know, for my, the, the writers I'm working with in terms of getting my own feedback and stuff, you know, we do, we just sort of check in with one another and there's periods where some people are like in the middle of writing a book. And so they have something to submit like every time if needs be. And other times where it's like, nah, you know, I mean, I, I've gone in that group sometimes six months without submitting anything. And then other times it's like, oh, I can have something for you next time. You know, I, and I say that every time. And usually, you know, we take turns, but so even if you're not super productive, I think it keeps you fresh. It keeps you thinking about writing craft. Um, and now so, does, yeah. Does it have to be about, does it have to be like a book that you're writing or can it be like articles? I write for Classic Chicago. And mm -hmm. so that could be actually helpful if somebody were to you know, help critique like some of the articles I write for them. Whatever Absolutely. you're working on. Okay. Yep. And it can be fiction, it can be real. <laughs> okay. totally. You know, in the form, it will ask you what you're writing. If you write fiction, if you write nonfiction, what genre. So yep. that's how, that's all that information is Tim's going to use to form the group. Right. right. Okay. I'm just getting into fiction. I've right. never written fiction in my life. So I'm taking a fiction class at the Newberry Library. Oh. So I'm hoping. Your dad knows where they are. Never mind. Where are they? Right. That's oh. great. All right, I promised that this would end before kickoff. So um, where? we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> end now. If anybody has any okay, further so questions, you can email me. They were in here in the sack, um, I took them out. We, <laughs> so thanks for joining Thank us you. and look for the email very soon. Thank you guys, so nice to see all your faces. Thank, Thank you, you, Sam and Tim. Yes. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, Tim. And you too, yeah, Samantha. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. Okay.